Where are you going? Hi, Sapphire. Hi, pretty girl. And who do we have over here? Hi, cutie. Oops. In the corner, what this is, um, pistachio orange bittersweet chocolate shortbread that I made from the New York Times cooking site. And you can tell that I am not a precision baker because these are not uniform. They're not the same size. Paul Hollywood wouldn't like them, but they are so delicious anyway. Oh. This is my attempt at vlogging. So good morning, it's Monday morning. Um, yesterday was a busy day. I did a Voxer, no, it wasn't a Voxer. It was a Zoom Christmas party for Sean the Book Maniac's Patreon. And it was so nice to meet some really lovely people and talk about books and just all book related things and talking about buddy reads and, and talking about um, maybe one book that we really liked this year. And so it was very pleasant. And then I went to, you know, I'm in two real life book clubs and I went to a friend's house and we had a dinner um, for a book club and we didn't talk about a book this month. Um, I try not to talk about any books in, thir in um, November or December with book clubs. I like to stick with just reading what I want on my own. So we didn't talk about any books, but it was really lovely. And um, my friend made this um, like Indian korma with cauliflower and chickpeas and rice and then a whole bunch of little toppings like almonds and cilantro and things that you could put on top of the, the food. And so that was delicious. And someone else brought naan and I brought wine. And so it was just a nice like friend gathering. And then today, my second book club, we're having a holiday lunch. So I'm going to be pretty soon getting all cleaned up and ready to go. And I made a cookie tray. Um, I haven't put the cookies on it yet, so I'll be doing that soon and heading out. Tomorrow it's going to snow. So I'm glad that the meeting is today or the luncheon. So that's my morning and I will talk to you soon. All right, got a cutting board. This is gonna be weird, but I'm gonna get an onion. Putting a little towel on my shirt. It's like an apron, but my aprons are dirty, so. All right, let's see. I've already taken all the chicken off of a rotisserie chicken. So this is, yeah, it's a chicken soup. Just thinking about books I've read recently. I really like The Colony. The Colony was about this Irish island. An island kind of off the coast of Ireland. Very remote and full of people who speak Gaelic. So there's, they speak with the Irish in the Irish language. And there's been this linguist who's been coming to visit for five years to document the infiltration of English into the Irish language. And this linguist, now I can't remember his name off the top of my head because here I am chopping up an onion, but he has a lot of baggage himself. Uh, because he is half Algerian 
and half French. And his father was a brute, a terrible man. And his mother wanted him to learn Algerian and was secretly trying to get him to learn it. And when the father found out, he put an end to that in a very violent way. So the boy, the linguist, now a man, um, is very adamant that the original Irish of these people stay their language. And then this landscape painter comes also. And the book starts out very, you know, kind of funny scene where this landscape painter wants the authentic experience of uh, going to the island on a very rickety kind of handmade boat instead of a bigger boat so he can fully experience what it's like and it's horrible for him because he doesn't know how to hold on and his he's getting flung around the boat and he vomits over the side and he almost loses his backpack and you can tell that the people who are rowing the boat are kind of laughing at this man for his ostentatiousness and uh, he goes there ostensibly to paint the cliffs of the island and actually he wants to paint the people and then that's when all the conflicts arise because the men who are kind of controlling everyone don't want him painting the people they only want him to paint paint the landscape and birds and just give them his money for feeding him over the course of the summer while he does these paintings and so that's where the book kind of starts. There's a lot of conflict between he and the linguist and the actual people who live on the island. There's a young boy who's in his maybe 12, I think, 12 years old or something, and he decides he wants to become a painter. And so all of these forces collide and, and combine. And the novel is really about power. It's about power structures and who is controlling what I'm sorry, my eyes are burning so badly right now that I'm not moving very fast um, from this onion. It's very strong. So, anyway, I'm putting all of this stuff together in this pan to kind of keep it in control. And, let's see. Ooh. Don't worry, I will be deleting and editing a lot of this. So anyway, the book is about control, who has it, and it takes place during the 1979, so. I forgot to talk about one part of the book is that in between the chapters about the characters I just described to you. There are many, many very factual and concise accounts of violence between nationalists and unionists in Ireland. So it's all about the troubles. It takes place in 1979 when a cousin of the queen is assassinated, which is also in The Crown, by the way. It was a very good episode of The Crown. Yeah, I don't like carrot peel. I can't stand the taste of it, so I always peel the carrots before I chop them up because I just don't like that kind of dirty, earthy taste. Ugh. Kind of like beets. I don't like beets. Anyway. Oop. Yes, I'm making a mess. Having chips and salsa.
the green chili plate. Ooh, that looks really good. Lots of Sometimes in a dream, he would be outside of the diamonds in the sky. Okay, hi. This is the end of my vlog and where I'm just going to take a few minutes to talk about a couple of books I just finished over the weekend and what I'm reading now. And yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for watching the previous footage if you got this far. But um, okay, let's talk about the books I finished. I, I finished my first ever Agatha Christie novel, which was called The Death of Roger Ackroyd. Is that right? No, it was called The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Hercule Poirot is the detective on the case, and the narrator is a uh, like a village doctor, and he lives with his sister who is unmarried, and so they have kind of a funny um, comedic relationship, and she knows everything about everyone in the town, and she is very interested in the murder in question that everyone wants to know who the killer was. And so it was just delightful. I did not know how funny and witty and judgmental the characters would be in the narrative. It was written in 1926, I believe. And it was just a delight. And so I'm happy that Agatha Christie had written, you know, like a million mysteries. Uh, I probably could never get through all of them in the rest of my life. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what other what other detectives are like and read more of the um, Hercule Poirot, 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 please correct me. I'm sorry uh, for all you speakers of French or, you know, you guys, come on. I'm sorry. The other book that I finished is called Desert Star by Michael Connolly. This is a Renee Ballard, Harry Bosch combo partnership novel. There were 36 novels written about Harry Bosch and five of them have a Renee Ballard who is, uh, she was a detective in the crimes unit um, and now she has been given a cold case department. And so she brings in a bunch of volunteers, which I thought was a little odd. It's like, they're not gonna get paid. For doing this but so she brings in Harry he's retired he's got a lot of problems and so there's a lot of regrets a lot of like looking back in the past they're digging up these cold cases trying to find a serial killer and Harry's just got a lot of his own problems so um, all in all I just really love this series and it makes me happy every year knowing that there's one to look forward to I don't know how long it will go on for but um, yeah it was just really enjoyable and the books that I'm reading now, um, the first one is an ARC. Um, it's a, trans, a work in translation from the Spanish. It's Argentinian, and it's called Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez. And it's translated by Megan O'Dowell. And this, I've only gotten just a little bit into it, but it's a father and son on a road trip in going to Buenos Aires. And the mother of the family, the wife slash mother of the son, of the little child um, has just died. And so the father and son have to go on this journey. I don't know why so far. And I do know that there's something odd about both of them. They have some powers that they haven't really, it's not been, com it's not coming out in the narrative so far to say what's going on, but I know it's going to be very scary. I usually don't read horror novels, but uh, I saw that this was available on NetGalley and so I requested it and um, yeah, I think it's going to be really good. And the other one I'm reading is called The Other Name. It's part of the Septology by Jan Fossi, Fossa, Foss, F-O-S-S-E. And this is a very unconventional narrative uh, about a painter. He paints all kinds of things. He's a don't know if he's famous that isn't made, been made clear to me yet but he does 
uh, have a doppelganger who is an alcoholic. And so I'm not really sure exactly where this is all going, but I have to tell you that there is this amazing scene very near the beginning of this book where he is sitting in his car and he's watching this young couple fall in love on a playground. And um, it's, it's very erotic and they're swinging and on the teeter-totter and just all of this interplay psychologically between the characters, the the main narrator who's thinking all of these things without punctuation, basically, uh, is sitting there hearing their thoughts or relaying them to us in some way. And oh, it's just, I just can tell that this is going to be a book and a series that I really like. And so I'm really enjoying that. Um, I don't know what else I'll get read between now and the end of the year. If I get through those couple of books, I'm going to be thrilled. I have a bunch of commitment reading in January, so that's coming up. And as for videos, I will get to my like best of 2022 video and maybe make a video evaluating whether or not I met any goals. If I usually don't set goals, so chances are I met the goals I didn't set. And... Um, I also do know I'm way behind on tags. I do appreciate being tagged and I just, I'm not good at following through on tags. And so I do would like to get through some of those, if not all of them in 2023. So that is a goal. So cross your fingers that I can follow through on that because they are fun and they do relay, you know, some of my reading tastes and, and interests to you. But, uh, so that's what I have for now. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope um, things are going well. Happy holidays to all of those of you who celebrate and happy, happy Hanukkah. And uh, yeah, I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.